Hey guys, my name is Wilson. Today we're gonna to be talking about the top 10 marketing strategies for your food and beverage restaurant. So then that way you can have line up out the doors, people begging to give you money because of how much they want to have your restaurant and your offerings. A lot of times we are spending thousands of dollars getting people to be able to do our Instagram, uh, write captions for us, create content for us, Actually, you know what, check out this video here. We're talking about how do you create a month of content all in one day by yourself without paying thousands of dollars for these different agencies that we're talking about. Anyways, today we're gonna to be talking about these top 10 strategies that are gonna be timeless for you. We're not talking about something that's been working in the past. We're not talking about something that's working in 2017, 18, 19, whatever the case may be. We're talking about strategies that's gonna be timeless that you can be able to use for years to come. So make sure you guys buckle up and start taking notes because we're gonna be diving right in. The number one marketing strategy are review sites. Review sites like Yelp and Google because when we are deciding where to eat, there are three places that we look at. First of all is through word of mouth. Second is through that restaurant's uh, social media platform. And thirdly, it is through review sites. According to a very, very prestigious study, more than 35% of the people that deciding where to eat, they go on review sites before they make that decision. And what that means is that a lot of the times, if you do not pay attention with how intentional you put up your content, if you do not pay attention to engage with your feedback and with your reviews, then you're missing out a lot of customers and potential people that are gonna be able to enjoy your food and beverage establishment. In today's world, review sites play such a crucial role in people's decision-making process. So just think about the last time you chose where to eat. You probably went on in, uh, your, your mobile, you probably searched up the restaurant, and the first thing that probably popped up would be the review site, you read it, and if it's no good, then the review site would be reviewing similar restaurants around the area. And in turn, you are so unforgiving, you would just click on that competitor's restaurant. And when you click into it, you see a 4.5 star or you see a 3.5 star and you're like, you read some of the comments and you're like, hey, you know what? They actually have really cool offerings, but their service is not that great. But hey, you know what? Their owner is actually replying to it and they're actually, they have a legitimate reason of why is it 3.5 stars. And in turn, you're gonna be able to actually make that decision right there and then. This is the power of review sites. Like it or not, this is what people rely on when they have a decision to make, whether they come and consume at your restaurant or your competitor's restaurant. So if you have a bad review on your site, make sure you guys reply to that. If you have a good review, make sure you reply to that as well. So how do you reply to bad reviews? You're like, hmm, you know what? I can actually acknowledge when people say my stuff is good, but how do I reply to a bad review? Well, if, it's the, if the bad review is warranted, make sure you guys acknowledge that and provide a solution to fix that. For example, if someone came into your restaurant, waited for 45 minutes and told you that they had a bad experience, that's the reason why they gave you a two star then yes, you can own up to that and say, sorry about your experience, sorry about this because of the fact that our chef got into an accident, he didn't come in on time, and that's why we were super short staffed that day. In the future, we'll make sure that we let our customers know so then that way they can manage their expectation a little bit better. That itself is a legitimate response and people are much more forgiving if it's authentic, to actually what's happening and people are actually owning up to their mistakes. On the other hand, if this bad review was a troll, if that all they're saying is giving you a one star saying that they dislike their customer service and they didn't really say too much, then you know what, feel free to troll back in their, in their reviews. Tell them, hey, you know what, if you wanna try out our competitors, here is the address of our competitor. Something along the lines to show the character of your business, to show the other people that you're not scared and you're confident in your food offering. That's how you're gonna be able to take care and take your review sites and, and intentionally provide that experience for your customers. So in turn, giving them a much better decision-making process. So now that we know the importance review sites 
make for a customer's decision making, we need to have much more reviews, okay? And a lot of times, how do you get more reviews is by incentivizing your customers, whether if, for example, they write your review, then they get an appetizer, right? An honest review. And when you're able to incentivize your customers to get something in return for them to write something that's honest about your food and beverage establishment, a lot of times they're gonna write the reviews. Ask your customers to write your review. And when you ask them to write your review, they're much more prone to be able to write for it. When you ask, you shall receive, okay? If asking doesn't work, incentivize them with an appy, with a free drink, with a dessert, whatever the case may be. This itself is a really, really underrated marketing strategy that not a lot of people use. So make sure when you guys go out there to market for your food and beverage establishment, to always incentivize people to write reviews for your site. Because when it comes down to it, would you choose someone that has a four-star review with only two feedback or would you be able to choose some restaurant with a 3.5 star but has 4,000 reviews that itself is much much more um, authentic when there's more reviews for your food and beverage establishment the second marketing strategy for your food and beverage is to have amazing beautiful photographs and what I mean by that is so many restaurants actually skip out on this fact they actually just take their iphones they just go around their shop and just take the pictures of their food their restaurants and they just post online this itself does not work in today's age a lot of our customers once again they the decision making process really comes back down to how pleasantly they interact with your food and beverage establishment on their phones okay that's because when we are always outside we're trying to figure out where to eat with our friends with the loved ones we're on our phone trying to figure that out and if the pictures does not do the real thing justice then how are people going to be able to actually know and want to or be tempted to come and try out your place at all they won't be tempted so make sure you invest in a professionally done shot because at the end of the day, if you already invested tens of thousands of dollars on renovating your shop, in marketing, in, in equipment, in hiring staff, what is another few hundred bucks for professional shots of your menu, of your interior, of your staffing? This itself goes a long way. So do not oversight and underrate the importance of professionally made photographs. And having a beautifully set of pictures does go a long way because for example, if I want to be able to wine and dine my significant other, and if I'm able to see the decor of how the place looks like, and then I'm, I'm gonna be able to see whether this is fitting for that occasion. And if it is, then it allows me to have more information to be able to make a decision, which is the reason why it's so important for you to be able to invest in a professionally shot uh, set of pictures, not only of your food, but also of your interior. And of course, when you have all these professionally shots done, not only can you put it on your website, review sites, but also your social media, also any of your marketing campaigns. And that's exactly what we do with 720 Suites. Every single time we take professionally made shots, when we have new flavors, when we have new promotions, and we're able to recycle all these photos and repurpose them for different outlets and repurpose them so then that way uh, people can be able to see how amazing our food looks and in turn that itself draws in a lot more customers because of appealing pictures so once again do not ever cheap out on professionally done pictures the third marketing strategy that's going to work for your food and beverage shop is your website and your seo and what i mean by that is website needs to always be up to date when you're thinking about hey you know what it's fine i'm just going to do my website by myself and that is, it can be outdated or whatever the case may be it doesn't have to be professionally made I strongly suggest you to think otherwise. And the reason for that is because when, like I was saying, when people are doing research of where to eat, they're gonna go on the review site, they're gonna go on your social media, and they're gonna go onto your website. And when they come to your website and they see pictures are out of date, they see and they see friction, they're trying to figure out where your location is and they can't find your location. They're trying to check out what you have to offer and it's completely out of date they're not gonna have a pleasant experience. And when they don't have a pleasant experience, they're gonna check out something else. 
This is your opportunity to impress your customers. And at the end of the day, you spend tens of thousands of dollars renovating the interior of your food and beverage establishment. What is another thousand, two thousand dollars for your website? A lot of times, websites are not up to date for restaurants. And when they're not up to date, your customers will go to your competitors website and they're going to be able to have much more pleasant experience and when they do they're going to choose to eat at your competitors over yours and key thing to note is that your website needs to be compatible with mobile nowadays in today's world many many people i would say majority of the people are on their phones scrolling and trying to figure out where to eat and when they go on your website it needs to be compatible with your phone not just the desktop okay so this is something that you must note down and when you're thinking about what to include into your website always include directions to your website always include your menu and always include your contact information in case they want to call you for any questions or to make a reservation okay these are the three key elements for your website now when we're talking about website we're talking about SEO as well. What is SEO? SEO is search engine optimization. What that means is that if someone goes online on Google and they search for best ice cream in Vancouver, 720 suites would pop up because we are able to actually put those keywords into our website. And in turn, when Google searches the most relevant website of best ice cream in Vancouver, then 720 suites pops up and if you're confused about how do you do SEO find a professional to help you get the foundational elements embedded on your website so for example when people search for your restaurant name you would pop up when you they search for your specific cuisine your website would pop up and if they search for anything that's relevant to you and your restaurant your website would pop up as well this is what we mean by SEO and this itself would allow you to show up a lot more in front of your customers and the more people that are able to go online on your site and the more people that have a pleasant experience with your website they are going to make sure they're going to convert into your customers so make sure do not oversee the importance of having a properly done website with proper SEO for your food and beverage establishment the fourth marketing strategy for your food and beverage establishment is social media. Like I was saying earlier, this is the top area and platform that people use to decide where to eat. So for example, when me and my wife decide where to eat, we're always on social media. We're on their platform scrolling through where we should eat because this acts as a digital menu for us to decide. And a lot of times we save all these different pictures of amazing looking food. And every time when we're thinking about, for example, uh, a brunch place, then we open up our saved archive and then we click on the Benedict that we really enjoyed because it looks so visually stimulating. We click on it, we see that it's from a certain restaurant in Vancouver, and then we go to that restaurant because of the picture. So, and what that means is the importance of social media is that it really dictates how we shop nowadays. So make sure that we are actually spending quality time in nurturing our customers by posting out beautifully appealing pictures of your food, okay? Or you can post pictures of how people feel when consuming your food offerings, right? So this is all stuff that you can actually post on your social media to engage with your customers. If you have trouble finding about, talking about, finding content to write about or finding content to post, check out my video right here. We talk about how do you create 30 days of content in just one day. Nowadays, people use social media to decide where to eat. So do not ever neglect this platform at all. So for the more advanced users on Instagram, okay, instead of posting pictures, you can actually post videos of how you prepare your food or how you shop for your food and something that is a little bit more engaging aside from appealing pictures. Another very, very important and effective tool to use is IG stories, Instagram stories. You can actually show how you actually go and purchase ingredients. You can show how the chef prepares the food before the service. So then that way it's much more behind the scenes, much more exclusive and much more insider feel 
a lot of times you can actually use more interactive features of Instagram as well, such as stickers and ask them, hey, you know what? What do you think about um, the plating of this food today? You know, start a poll so then that way people can actually engage. And when they are able to engage, they feel much more connected with your place and they feel like that they are able to make a change in your restaurant offering as well. Try reposting your customers' posts, your customers' uh, journey, because that allows you to show uh, much more that you have people who love your product, okay? And this itself adds to that social proof element to your food and beverage establishment. At the end of the day, make this whole process fun, make it engaging, because that's how your customers would be able to connect with you and your restaurant. And in turn, they're gonna be able to decide to choose you over your competitors because you much more engage with them. The fifth marketing strategy that you should definitely focus on is word of mouth. By far, this is the most important strategy out there. And a lot of times, your what other people say about your restaurant has much more weight and strength than what you say about your establishment, which is the reason why you need to be super intentful when creating this whole customer journey. So every single touch points, you should be intentful with them. And what I mean by touch point is how people interact with your brand. What is that experience like? From the moment that they hear about your brand to the moment that they do research on your brand online, how does that look? How does your review sites look? How does your social media look? How does your website look? These are all different touch points which allows people to have a certain experience and a certain feeling for your food and beverage establishment. So whenever there are any conflict or any uh, resistant and friction that can happen. So for example, if people are trying to walk by and look for your restaurant, but the signages are not there and it doesn't look good or that people have difficulty finding your signage, that itself is something that you can improve on. That itself is a touch point which you can improve on. And in turn, when you improve on all these different touch points, that itself allows your customers to really praise how well and how good of an experience they had with your food and beverage establishment. So that itself allows you to be able to constantly improve in delivering a better experience for your customer and in turn this becomes a flywheel cycle. The better experience that you serve, the better the word of mouth is, the better the word of mouth, the more customer comes to you and that itself is an amazing marketing strategy for your food and beverage shop. The sixth marketing strategy is to host events at your food and beverage shop. If, for example, your restaurant has downtimes, then make sure that you fill those downtimes with events. Try reaching out to other establishments or other um, talent or other suppliers or small business talent that can actually come in and provide a certain service. So for example, for us, we invite and collaborate with calligraphy artists to make sure that they come to our spot and host an event. And for them, it would become a free rent event and they love it because, hey, you know what? They have an establishment which they can actually host an event at. In turn, they bring in their own customers and when their own customers come, then we can actually provide them with our service. We're able to expose our brand to their customers and in turn, we're able to cross promote. And because of the fact that our place, we are offering events during the slower times, we're gonna have this space regardless. We're gonna have the sunk cost of paying for rent regardless. Why not promote and use this opportunity to market to a different new set of customers as well? That's the importance of hosting events is to stay relevant within different industries and within different uh, time frame. Super important to be able to host events because it's almost at a zero cost to you, okay? That's the importance and effect of running a proper event all the time for your restaurant. So now that you know the importance of hosting events at your food and beverage place, it's important to find people who wants to host the event. And how do you find these people? Go on meetup.com. Meetup.com allows you to find events that are happening locally around your area. And you can actually reach out to these people who are hosting events and offer your place either for free 
or at a fee or offer them a pl an arrangement where every attendee that attends they're charging they, they you charge them a, a drink or dessert or a appy or whatever the case may be so then that way you can actually uh, compensate part of your cost okay so aside from meetup.com sometimes we utilize facebook groups facebook marketplace or we go on instagram and find different small business people who actually need a place to host events. So for example, calligraphy classes, art centers, floral uh, classes, a lot of these different talent need a place to be able to host events. And that's how we're gonna be able to grow uh, and, and cross promote within their customers and our customers. The seventh marketing strategy that worked wonders for us is PR, okay? And what I mean by PR is having a very prestigious outlet featuring your food and beverage establishment. Why do we even want PR? PR gives you social credibility. It gives you credibility because someone, and a publication, media outlet that is well known within your city is featuring you. And that has a lot of weight when it comes to how people perceive your food and beverage establishment. For us, we got publication from one of the biggest publication within our first two months of opening. And in turn, we were able to generate a lot of buzz because we were featured by this really well-known publication. So in turn, aside from this social credibility, you can actually use this piece as a marketing channel for you and marketing campaign. You can actually run ads with it. You can put it on your social media outlet. And this itself really uh, it compounds the effect of getting PR. Now, I know you must be thinking, hey, you know what, but Wilson, I don't have tens of thousands of dollars looking for a PR agency. Good news for you is that a lot, actually all our PR is free PR. How do you get free PR? You may be wondering like, hey, you know what, how can you get so many publications featuring your food and beverage establishment? And I'm gonna be telling you how you do that. First of all, have a wow element, an element that allows people to talk about you because if you do not have something that is a talking point, something that is different, something that is out of the world, then why are people even talking about you? So make sure you're not vanilla, have some polarity. So for us, we were having smoke coming out of ice cream. Conventional ice cream in a cone does not have smoke. And if you combine something that is visually pleasing and visually stimulating with a product that is boring, which is just ice cream, that itself is a huge talking point back five, 10 years ago. And that's the reason why we were super, super successful. After you have a wow element, then you need to script and compile your own press release. And after that, you're gonna have your outreach to the different uh, publications and send it all to them. And then you're gonna have this compounding effect, the FOMO effect that we're talking about. If you guys wanna learn more about how do you craft your free PR booklet, so then that way you can have prestigious and well-known publications featuring your food and beverage establishment, make sure you check out in the link below. I put this all in the ultimate course below. So check it out below if you wanna know how to craft your free PR. But nonetheless, really, really important thing is to not, to not neglect, okay? the importance of PR because it is super helpful. It gives you compounding effect for your food and beverage establishment. The eighth way of marketing your food and beverage establishment is working with big vendors. And what I mean by that is working with vendors to cater your service and your offering, whether you be offering ice cream, bubble tea, food, pasta, sandwiches, whatever the case may be, there's always a need for your product and your offering. So for example, for us at 720 Suites, we cater to a lot of different weddings because we're offering them a little tiny treat. And people love having our ice cream sandwiches at their wedding because not only does it look nice, does it taste good, but also it adds an element of some supporting local, which is the reason and angle that we're approaching to all these different wedding planners. And in turn, we're able to land a lot of wedding uh, catering deals. So within your industry and within your offering, reach out to different people and suppliers and offer them 
a catering service. That itself allows you to diversify in terms of having not just people dine into your place, but also having a re re revenue stream that you can actually count on. That is a separate revenue stream. Whether you have people coming into your restaurant or not, you still have this catering uh, revenue stream all the time. And in turn, it gives you a certain padding as well for your bottom line. The ninth marketing strategy is collaboration. This is a marketing strategy that I absolutely love. And as you can see on 720's Instagram, we have collaborations all the time. And why do we wanna do that? It is because of leverage. What is leverage? Leverage is using and, and, and actually getting benefit from your collaborations list, your collaborations customers. And by you collaborating with each other, you're able to be able to expose your brand to this brand's customers. And in turn, you're gonna be able to reach hundreds, if not thousands of people much more faster than if you were to go out there to, to look for customers yourself, which is the reason why we always promote collaborations. To give you an example, we collaborated with a marshmallow uh, an artisan marshmallow company and we created a special ice cream flavor for them and they had more than 10,000 followers in their Instagram account and because we collaborated our Instagram account grew by 2,000 subscribers just because we collaborated and in turn people and their customers were able to be exposed to our brand that didn't know about us and they came and, ex and experienced our joint venture of a collaboration of our product and in turn fell in love with us and now they became our fan which is the reason why I highly, highly recommend you to do collaborations um, with any other type of people or, or vendors or other establishments who have similar uh, client avatar and client profile, then that way you can cross pollinate and leverage off other people's customer list. The 10th marketing strategy that I'm gonna be sharing with you today is running ads. This is actually one of my least favorite when it comes to marketing strategy because so many people are running ads be just because your competitors are running it just because other people are doing it and in turn they don't have the fundamentals right and if they don't have the fundamentals right then the ads are basically just burning money okay so that's the reason why i highly highly recommend you to make sure your foundations are set understand why you're running the ads and understand that running ads is basically trading dimes for quarters. And what that means is you may be spending thousands of dollars running ads, and in turn, you may be benefiting what, by $10,000, $20,000. But if you're not aware of the foundations and the structure of how do you structure your ads, and the intent behind it, and the objectives of why you're structuring these ads, then it becomes very, very difficult, and it really, really, really becomes a pitfall very, very soon. But nonetheless, nowadays on the flip side, it is super cheap to be able to run ads, especially on Facebook and on Instagram and on Google ads, because if you know what you're doing, because of the fact that we can actually hyper target people. And what does that mean? It is because we can actually target people that live within five kilometer radius of us that loves Japanese food and that traveled to Japan recently. We can actually target people to that specific of a degree and show, show them that, you know what, we are an authentic Japanese restaurant. Do you miss Jap Japan? Come and try out our latest offering. We can actually market and target these people nowadays and that's the importance and that's why today, in today's world, it's so important to be able to actually know how you're able to run your ads before running your ads, right? So if you want to learn more about running ads, make sure you guys actually learn more about it before you actually spend the money running ads. So there you go, the top 10 restaurant marketing strategies that I've shared with you. These are the timeless strategies. The platforms might change, but the principle remains the same. So if in the future, the platforms have changed. Instagram is no longer the thing, not, no longer the king. No one is on Instagram. The new platform, you can utilize the same principle. And that's the beauty of this whole thing that I'm sharing with you. 
If you guys find value in this, I'm sure you're gonna find value in the link below because I talk about for how do you build your restaurant from A to Z. We've been talking about how do you find your customer demo, how do you find your winning matrix, how do you have like negotiate free rent, and how do you choose a perfect location to much more marketing strategies. Everything that I've learned in the last 10 years, I've put it down in the ultimate course down in the link below. If you guys wanna learn more, check it out down below. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe along the journey for much more valuable videos. Otherwise, smash the like button and I'll see you guys in the next video.